Today, I want to quickly talk to you, ladies and gently, Ben, about methods that God uses to communicate with his people. Because sometimes it is not God who's not speaking. It's you using what he used yesterday to speak to you as a conduit or rather as a reference to what he's going to say to you and how he's going to say it. If God speaks to me today in a dream concerning something, I don't expect God because if I expect God to come in that way, I have influence over God. So I channel God. I'm sovereign. I tell God how I want to hear him. So I don't expect him to come back in a dream and tell me. If he does, then he does. But I'm ready in all areas. What are these areas? All the methods that I know that God uses to speak to his people. The Bible says in the book of Job 33, and you read verse 14 and 15, God speaks to what? To all men. Another vision is God, God speaks to every man. Another one is God speaks once, yet twice, but men perceive it not. Verse 15, in a dream, in a vision of the night, right? When deep sleep falleth upon men, in the slumberings of the bed, he opens the ears of men and he seals their instruction. There we see four things that God is using to talk to men. But those are not the only four things. When you read the Bible, you see others hearing God in different ways. God speaks so much that he can even use a donkey to speak. But if you are not able to see that God is speaking through the donkey, you will miss the voice of God. That is coming from a donkey. So God is so big that he does not use one method to speak to us. But here's what's interesting about all these methods that God is using and is going to use to speak to us. All these methods, they come from within. No method is from outside. I'm talking about when God is going to speak to you or through you. This has nothing to do with somebody coming to prophesy to you. This is you now hearing the voice of God. Remember, that's what, that's what we're talking about, right? I'm not talking about somebody coming to talk to you concerning what God is saying about your life, right? But this is you hearing the voice of God. Everything, I said everything, is going to happen from within. Of course, in the days of Jesus, it happened when everyone was there in Jordan. And that had to happen. That had to happen. That's why when John had that, John was now convinced. It, it had to happen. It was a confirmation. And not only did it happen in the times of John, when John baptized Jesus, it also happened in Matthew 17, the mountain of transfiguration. Remember, Elijah and Moses appeared. God said, this is my son. Now, let's continue. So what do you mean, Apostle, it happens from within? Do you know that even the future of a believer in Christ is not in tomorrow, but with, from within? So my future as a believer is not tomorrow. Unbeliever, their future is in tomorrow. Hence, I'm not worried about tomorrow because my future is not in tomorrow. But my future is from within. I'll give an example. Do you know that a forest is trapped in a seed. So the forest is not ahead of the seed. The forest is inside the seed. Your future is not ahead of you. But your future as a believer in Christ is inside of you. Whatever God is going to do and whatever God is going to do in your life, he's going to do it from within. So the first step of hearing God's voice is to understand or is, is in understanding that it's going to come from within. I'm not saying God is not going to speak to you through others, but I'm talking about hearing the voice of God. That's what the Bible says in the book of John chapter 10 and you read verse 27. My sheep, they know my voice and they follow me. Not they just hear it. They know it. They hear it and they know it. I know them and they know me. Glory be to God. So there are three levels that are more important. I'm not saying there are only three levels. I know of seven levels, but there are three levels that are very important. The first level is called general revelation. Now, every believer who is not in the fivefold ministry or fivefold ministries, or rather the callings, right? I'm talking about the prophet, evangelist, teacher, pastor, and apostle here, right? Any believer who's not in that can hear God through general revelation. If you can hear God through general revelation, yet you have the Holy Spirit, you must start investigating if you really have the Holy Spirit. Because this is the lower level that even a baby in Christ, somebody who got born again today, will be able to hear what God is saying to them at that hour using general revelation. What I'm about to say, most of you, 
99.999% you'll be hearing it for the first time. But I want you to hear it with the ear of the Spirit. Right. When we're talking about general revelation, we are talking about a revelation that you yourself have investigated and results speak more than what you have heard. As I explained it, it will make sense. So it's a revelation that you receive, that the more you receive it, the results confirm what you have received and what you have been, the revelation that you have received. Because there are levels where you get to in the prophetic or in hearing God, that even if the results can be say the opposite, you know what you had. And you know it's God who spoke. I'll give an example. Jonah went to Nineveh. He told them they are going to die. They never died. And he was angry that God said to him, he was going to destroy the city and God never destroyed the city. And he was under the tree there. So we see God, he spoke to him, but it did not happen. But he didn't turn back and say, God never spoke to me. God said to Abraham, go and sacrifice your son. God is not a man that he will repent from his word. That's what the book of Numbers says. But Abraham went. And when he got to the mountain, a lamp was trapped by its horns. And he did not sacrifice his son. But when he left his house, what song was he singing? I'm going to sacrifice my son. Why? Because God said so. But when he came back, even though people who heard him saying God said he must go and sacrifice his son, thought, you, you did not hear from God. Because if God told you this, how come you're coming back with your son? He himself, he knew deep down in his heart that he heard the voice of God. So there is a certain level of hearing God that even though the results can say something different from what you heard, you will not say, I heard something else. You will know I heard God. But with the general revelation, this is mostly for Napios and Technon, not Hues. Hues, the matured ones. This is for babies, right? And uh, the ones who are between maturity and the baby state, which is Napios and Technon, right? So general revelation helps them to know. This is where I'll give an example, and please hear me. I feel it in the spirit. I don't know if you guys remember the days we got born again. You will move like this, and you will feel there is an angel moving. You will go outside and say, let it rain, and rain will come down. If you have never practiced that, I don't know, you missed out. Some of us, when we got born again, hey, we, I'm telling you now, we were doing crazy things. The time we got born again, ah, the rain will be raining, and we'll go outside and say, rain, stop. And the rain will stop like, ah, what just happened right now? And you say, rain, rain, and it rains, and you go like, hey, Wanda, I'm powerful, right? What, what you are seeing there is what we call general revelation. So God is using results to confirm what is in you. I don't know if that you, you get it, right? That's what the Bible says. He who has a child inside has a testimony. Testimony is not just testimony because you have something. It's based on results. Okay, let me go deeper here. So under general revelation, we have what we call spiritual conviction. Write it down. So this is where God, under general revelation, which is the lower level of hearing the voice of God, God uses what are called spiritual conviction. It is like you want to do something, and as you're about to do it, you know, I can't do this. Not because God said don't do it. And you know, you can even stand and tell people God said it, yet God did not speak. What you felt or what you had, as in like head, not head of hearing, but head, is spiritual conviction. And this is what causes people most of the time who are about to sin or who are about to enter into sin. Say, no, 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 no. It's spiritual conviction. So whenever we're talking about spiritual conviction, we are talking about inner awareness. You are aware, but from the inside, that this is from the devil. This is from God. So that is spiritual conviction. It comes from within. So the Holy Spirit will use that. And all of a sudden, you go like, uh, uh, I'm not doing this. So this is what leads people to righteousness, spiritual conviction. That's why somebody can be born again and the next thing they don't want to hear anything about God and they go back to the world. And right there, they go like, hey, God wants me back. Spiritual conviction. If I was to be deep, every prophet has this inner awareness, spiritual conviction. But in them, it's so high that it is not just a conviction. It is as if it moved from hearing or feeling it into seeing it. The Bible says in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5, verses 26. When Elisha saw Gehazi coming back, remember the story of Naaman, and he said he doesn't want the gifts, but Gehazi went to take the gifts. The prophet said, was my spirit not with you? It is, you see, the actual translation there does not say my spirit was with you. It's a question. Was my spirit not with you? There the prophet used inner awareness. 
That's what the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians 14. And you read verse 32. It says, the spirits of prophets are subject to prophets. So a prophet here has a spirit here that is called the spirit of a prophet. And that spirit is subject to another prophet. So that's what causes prophets to have, prophets to have inner awareness. Because they might not be in a place, but their spirit can go to that place. Then we have what we call spiritual leading. This one is my favorite. We call it spiritual perception. And if you know me, you know I love talking about this one. Spiritual perception. Whenever we are talking about spiritual perception, write it down, please. This is now inward knowledge about something. It can be about people. It can be about a place. It can also be about a situation where you all of a sudden know about that place or know about the person or know about the situation without anybody telling you. Quickly go to the book of Acts chapter 27, verse 10. And said unto them, yep. Sirs, I perceive that this, this voyage will be with hurt and much damage. Okay. So here Paul is talking to people with experience when it comes to sailing and all of that, right? The captain looked at the weather and he realized the weather is fine. Now, the people who owned the boat or the ship asked people with more experience if it was clear for their ship to go. And everybody said yes. Hence, he's using the word says. But Paul comes in Acts 27, and you read verse 10, right? He says, says, I perceive that there will be a shipwreck. Notice if you may, everybody pay attention. This is spiritual perception, spiritual leading. He does not say, I had a dream yesterday night that there will be a shipwreck. He does not say, God spoke to me, there will be a shipwreck. He does not say, the Holy Spirit revealed it to me, there will be a shipwreck. He says, I perceive. This is inward knowledge about something. It is a lower level, but also those who are in a higher level uses this one. That's why spiritual perception is the most important thing in hearing God. So in general revelation, we have spiritual conviction, and we now have spiritual perception, which is spiritual leading. I'm sure you have heard people saying, I feel led. Have you asked yourself, led by what? The reason why they are saying they, are, they feel led is because the Holy Spirit was not specific in most cases, or God was not specific. But they know that whatever they are downloading is from God. But one will say, but how come God does not speak to them direct if this is from them? It's because they have not yet reached a certain, one might have reached a certain level of hearing God, but with how general revelation work, especially spiritual perception, some of you, when you start perceiving, you are not perceiving at that moment. You might perceive based on experience, and you can also perceive because it was dropped in your spirit five weeks ago. But you were able to download it at that time. So when you download it at that time, you are not saying, I'm hearing God. You say, I perceive. But where are you perceiving it from? From your spirit. I wish I was in the school of prophets. Ah, we were going to go deeper. Ah, we are going to practicalize this thing. Ah. <laughs> it is possible, especially when a Christian does not have a clear conscience. The Bible says we having a clear conscience in the book of Timothy, right? So if you don't have a clear conscience, it's possible for God to give you a message today and you retrieve it 40 years from now. Number three. Under general revelation is what we call spiritual burden. This happens to a lot of believers. In Acts 20, Paul speaks about a spiritual burden. Praise the Lord, everybody. But how does a spiritual burden work? A lot of you, you'll agree with me now. That, ah, Apostle, now you're talking my language. So that's a revelation. Yes, it is a revelation. That's God speaking to you. But that's a lower level of hearing God. Because with spiritual burdening or with spiritual burden, how it works is that you can be fine during the day. Happy, bubbly, laughing. And all of a sudden, as if somebody dropped something in your spirit, you know something is wrong. Or something is about to go wrong. But you don't know where, how, what time. And every time, whenever there is a spiritual burden, the Holy Spirit leads you into prayer. And all of a sudden, you are pushed to pray. You know you have to pray. But you don't even know sometimes who to pray for. So that's a spiritual burden. A lot of people have this burden and ignore it. That is God speaking to you. So that feeling of something is about to go wrong. It's like you get in a car and you say, hey, today something is saying I must not drive. It's not something. It's a burden. 
This is a spiritual burden. Well, when you get into your car and you hold your steering wheel, you, uh-uh, no, not today. They must forgive me today. I'm not going to work. Or alternatively, I'm taking a taxi or a train. You see that now? And if you, you then force and something happens and you go, I knew it. And you go, something told me not to. It was a spiritual burden. It is a burden that comes. And at that moment, most of you, you feel like, Aish, my day is not well. Why? My spirit is disturbed. You are not disturbed anyway. People confuse their spirit being disturbed with spiritual burden. Because they don't know what a spiritual burden is. Because when a spiritual burden comes, your joy, your happiness at that moment is like it's taken away immediately. Spiritual burden remains until you attend to the situation. And until you attend, it will remain. It might fade, but it will come back. And the quickest way to lift up that burden is to enter into prayer. And not just any prayer, speak in tongues. We know not what to pray for. But the Holy Ghost himself maketh intercession for us. Right? So, watch this now. It is important for you to pay attention to this teaching. A lot of people will neglect a spiritual burden. It is what we call general revelation. I'll give the fourth one. Spirit witness. Now, spirit witness is inward assurance here. Here we're talking about inward assurance from God that everything is all right. The landlord is saying, tomorrow I'm sending a letter. We are removing you from that place. We are evicting you tomorrow. There is eviction letter, the eviction letter that is coming. Instead of you running around, it's like you have, you just know it will be fine. Somebody can say tomorrow, or you can go to a place and they tell you that you, you, you didn't get the job. Instead of you feeling depressed, you're just like, okay. Then you go like, I don't know, but I'm fine. Spirit witness. Inward assurance. It's as if you know another job is coming. The Bible says, and Peter, the following day he was supposed to be killed. And Peter was sleeping. I had a problem for years with Peter. Every time I reach Acts 12, I will really ask myself and the Holy Spirit questions. Why was Peter sleeping? Herod was not joking. Peter knew that. And that is because Herod killed James with the sword, Elder James. Now he went for Peter. Peter the following day is dying. The Bible says, and Peter was sleeping. I asked God, how does sleep come knowing you're dying the following day? Why was Peter not writing his last letter to the church? But Peter was sleeping. Spirit witness. Inward assurance that everything is all right. The second level of hearing God's voice, right? This is like methods which God uses. Because a baby in Christ, we are not taught these things in church, eh? Cannot hear God like a matured person in Christ. It is like a baby in the house. The way the elder one hears the parents is not the way the last born is hearing the parents. Though the parents might treat the last born like an egg, but the level of hearing and understanding is not the same as that one. That's why Jesus will look at the disciples and say, I, I was going to tell you, but you won't understand. And they will insist, tell us. He's like, but you won't understand. And one time he spoke in riddles. And they asked him in prophecy, but why when you teach, you teach like this and you in parables? What's happening? He says, so that to, to hear you may hear but not understand. Ah, uh -uh. So why teaching if you want us to hear but not understand? To see, they may see but not perceive. What is he talking about? It's because they are, that, that, that's what the Bible says. And their eyes, after three years of, of being with Jesus, the Bible says the eyes of their understanding was open. So all along, the eyes of their understanding was closed. So there are things you can't force yourself into. You need another revelation to unlock another. And another will unlock another. But with you, what you think is, if God is going to speak to me, he will speak to me right now. And you are missing it already. Because there are prophets who walked with God, who are born prophets, and God did not do it that way. What makes you think with you, God is going to do it that way? If God will be symbolic in dreams, speaking to prophets that he has assigned. You, you are not a prophet. Of course, you are told by other preachers you are a prophet of your own life. They are lying to you. There is no such thing. Right? Now, I'm not saying you cannot, you know, uh, confess and prophesy over your life. To prophesy over your life does not make you a prophet of your own life. There is no such thing. Run away from it. Run away from it. Now, I'm not going to go deeper there. I wish somebody can hear me. I don't know. You see, me people, 
most people who follow me, they follow me because they are ready for the truth. Are we together? Because I will tell you scriptures. I will, I will, I will actually show you things in the Bible that it will be very hard for you to unlearn because you have known them for years. And instead of seeing it with the eye of the spirit, you feel like, ah, this guy. But it's in the Bible. Then instead of you saying, ah, but let me go with what the Bible says, you take me as an enemy and say, ah, it's teaching heresy. Are we together? Why? Because I will show you things in the Bible that will blow your mind. Just like yesterday, two guys were talking, all right, about the, about the ministry of angels yesterday. And one was quoting the book of Enoch. Then I had to intervene there to say, you can't use the book of Enoch to build your argument, right, against somebody who's using the Bible. Because the Bible is an inspired book. And every book that is in here is inspired. And we believe every book that is not here, all the apocrypha, they are not inspired. We believe that. Are, are we together? That's what we believe. We believe inspired books are in here. So they were talking about angels. And so this guy was using the book of Enoch to say, uh, the female angels that fell, right? And the female angels that were there, then the guy was like, no, 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 no. There's no, I said, no. There's no such thing like a female angel. There's no female angel anywhere. So the guy was using the book of Enoch. The book of Enoch says there are female angels. I said, wait, you can't use the book of Enoch to argue. And I'm not saying you are wrong, but don't use the book of Enoch. When I said to this guy, I'm not saying you are wrong, but don't use the book of Enoch. This one then turns to me and he says, even you, you agree that there are female angels. I said, I don't agree. I know it. I'm like, female angels? Angels don't marry? I didn't say angels marry. Let's go to the Bible. Let them hear what the Bible says. After that, you, you will argue with the scripture. Whether it's a vision or not, remember, people use, but it was a vision. Listen, listen. How do we know the angels that are called many-willed ones? It's because Ezekiel was in a vision. Many-eyed ones. He was in a vision. How do we know about celestial angels? He was in a vision. When he saw the face of a man, the face of an ox, the face of a lion, the face of an eagle, he was in a vision. And we know there are angels like that. Glory be to God. Listen, I'm not the one who wrote what we are about to read. The question is, are they female angels or not? You yourself, you will conclude after reading this. Don't say yes and don't say no if you don't know what the Bible say about that. The book of Zechariah, chapter 5. We can do verse 9. Zechariah chapter 5, verse 9. Hear the Bible. Then I looked up, uh -huh. and there before me were uh -huh. two women. Two women. With the wind in their wings. With the wind in their wings. Have you seen a normal human being with wings? They are you are also quiet. No, Apostle. You are also quiet. You have never seen... Look, look at the people. Look, look at the people. Look at how angry they are. As if I'm the one saying it. Start it afresh. Let them be angry more. Let's go. Then I looked up, uh -huh. and there before me were uh -huh. two women. There were two women. With the wind in their wings. With the wind in their wings. Uh -huh. They had wings like those of a stalk. We know what a stalk is, right? Uh -huh. And they lifted up the basket uh -huh. between, between heaven, heaven and, and earth. Two women. Wind under their wings. So you tell me, are they female angels? Yes or no? You, tell me. Don't tell me your mind. Tell me from what you read. You see, so I'm just showing you. Then I had to bring it to him. Then he was interpreting the way he was interpreting it. I said, but did the men see two women? He said, yes. With two wings, with, with wings under their, with wind under their wings. He said, yes. I said, but what do you say? He says, no, the thing is you don't understand. He meant this. I said, no, what is this saying here? You see, whether you call them agents or what, the fact is they have wings. And what do we know to have wings? Because if we read and it said, I saw two men and there was wind under their wings, you'll have concluded it's angels. I don't know what people are against when it comes to women. Eh? What is a female angel compared to Mary carrying Jesus in a womb? You didn't hear what I just said. If a woman 
could carry the greatest revelation of all time called Jesus Christ. What is a female angel? Why would one be worried about God creating a female angel? Are you dictating what God can do and what God cannot do? If a woman could carry the greatest revelation of all time, and that is Jesus. Why didn't Jesus come out of the rib of Joseph? But a womb of a woman carried Jesus, and you have a problem with woman preaching. You have a problem. I'm telling you. I mean, there are certain things. If a woman carried Jesus, and Jesus, John 1, 1, is the word. So if a woman carried the word of God, now talks about the word you have a problem, but you, are not, you have no problem with Mary carrying the word you preach. So anyway, the reason why I had to bring this is because yesterday, so somebody that I knew was not happy with me. So I'm used to it. Because at the end of the day, me, I will show you the Bible. Whichever way you take it, it's entirely up to you. Because it's very difficult to teach people something new when they've known something to be true for the rest of their lives. And people are not after the truth. They are after what they want to be the truth. So no matter how hard and no matter how strong you teach the truth, if people that you are teaching to are not after the truth, it will enter through here and it will come out through there. And they will still go back to what? To what they know. And only to realize that what they know does not even help them thrive spiritually in any way. They are stuck, but they are stubborn in culture. Stuck in culture. Frozen success. Frozen success is what people thought or used to think worked that never worked. <laughs> Are we doing <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. All right, let's go. So I said what? Special revelation. What is special revelation? Special revelation, this is the highest level. Okay, second highest level that God uses to speak to us. Under it, we have dreams. We know what dreams are. I've taught a lot about that, what they mean, what they do, and how to interpret them. Number two, we have visions. I've taught about five types of visions, I believe. So there are different types of visions. If you have not seen that, please visit um, our YouTube and check that. We have five, I think five types of visions that I taught about. Though we have, I know we have seven types of visions, uh, but I taught on five. We have trans, right? Peter fell into a trance. Remember in Acts 10, when he was thinking about food because he was hungry, he fell into a trance. We then have out-of-body experience what Ezekiel was, uh, was experiencing, what Paul was experiencing in 2 Corinthians 12. So we have also the ministry of angels. This is special revelation. Not everybody sees angels, right? Not, not everybody encounters angels. That's why it's very difficult for the church to teach about angels. And I want you to understand that we are not led by mental impressions. We are not led by dreams. We are not led by visions. We are not led by trance. We are not led by out-of-body experience. We are not led by angels. We are led by the Holy Ghost. So you should fully depend on the Holy Ghost as he himself uses these methods to speak to you. That's what the Bible says, I shall pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy and the old men shall dream dreams. But what's causing them to dream dreams? The Holy Spirit. The young men shall see visions. What's causing them to see visions? The Holy Spirit, you see? So before visions, there is what? The Holy Ghost. So you can't go for this and neglect the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Just like Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. And you don't want to be a sheep, but you want to hear his voice. You can't be a goat and hear his voice. It doesn't work like that. You need to follow him. You need to follow his instructions, right? You need to love him. You need to serve him. We have... Because of time, spirit revelation. Of course, people who are very deep, they call them spiritual revelation. This is where you hear the audible voice of God, like Moses. Very few people, to be honest, hear the audible voice of God. There are those that heard the voice of God in a certain way, and they vowed never to want to hear it. To some, like a roaring thunder, he spoke. To some, like a voice of a trumpet. I'm telling you. To some, like a sound of many waters. That shows you that God's voice does not sound the same to all people. Just like people who are saying, I, 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 I was with God yesterday. I saw the Lord. I saw God. 
You see, you can see Jesus in the vision. But to see God now. That's why Jesus, no man has seen the Father. And the Bible tells us in the book of Timothy that God dwells in a place called unapproachable light. That's where God is. So if somebody asks you, where does God stay? Tell them, in a place called unapproachable light. Because that's what the Bible says. There is light, but you can't approach it. So when it comes to spiritual revelation or spirit revelation, this is where now you hear the audible voice of God. The Bible says, I will remove the stony heart and I will replace it with the spirit, with my spirit. And you begin to hear my voice. And you'll hear the Spirit saying, go ye this way. That is spirit revelation. People in this one, they don't talk a lot. And most of them are not known in this level. These are people like Ananias. You know Ananias in the Bible. Paul met Jesus. He went blind. God appears to Ananias. Go and pray for Paul. <laughs> and not only that, tell him what to do. Uh, God does not say, I will tell you what to tell him. He says, go and tell him what to do. And we know that because God spoke to Paul and said, the man will tell you what to do. The man was not known. Even in the Bible, there is no book of Ananias, but this is the man who unlocked Paul. I know Paul was released from the church in Antioch. I'm not against that. Acts 13. I'm not against that. Praise the Lord, everybody. But I want you to understand that Ananias went there. He was unknown. But the man will speak to God, say, Paul is a murderer. God says, no, 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 no. That man is no longer Saul. He's Paul. These are people who hear the audible voice of God. And most of them are not known.